All right, welcome everybody. Um, if you can hear the sound of my voice, raise your hand. Some of you know the know the drill. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So um, I'm going to be flipping around from some of the handouts to showing you some screenshots to I don't know doing a bunch of stuff. Um, the title of this is the future of real estate. And I also I'm going to be talking about three different income streams that you can let me get this going someplace up here. How about that? All right. Um, three different income streams with EXP Realty. Now, just a little bit about my background. I've been at EXP Realty for a little more than a year. I was prior to that uh, with a small company called Century 21 where I worked on and off at Century 21 for quite a few years. Um, don't want to say how many, because people always go, ooh, you know, that sort of thing. Um, I was the vice president of the largest Century 21 group in Northern California. Um, our, one of our offices at one point was the number three Century 21 office in the United States. Uh, more recently, I spent seven years as a productivity coach and a recruiter for Keller Williams. And I worked at most of the Keller Williams offices in the Bay Area from time to time, coaching, training agents. I was a certified trainer for Keller Williams. I was the director of training at one point for Century 21. I'm a certified mentor at eXp Realty. And so um, I've been doing this for a little while. And of all the places that I've worked, I'm happiest with being at eXp Realty. And I'll uh, tell you why I didn't join sooner and, and you know that sort of thing as we're going on. And just a little bit about what's the difference between eXp and any of those other offices that I mentioned. And really what we're asking is what's the difference between Netflix and Blockbuster Video? You know, what's the, the difference between um, best buy in Amazon, right? That's sort of what we're asking about. And so I've worked at typical franchises. Keller Williams is a franchise. Uh, Century 21 is a franchise. And franchises, these were brick and mortar, these were brick and mortar stores. And although I had been introduced to EXP many years ago, I've had quite a few people at EXP suggest that I join EXP. The reason I didn't join EXP earlier is because I had this belief, this limiting belief, that my business model required to me to have to go to an office, right, where they had a training room and meeting rooms and work out of a brick and mortar building. I, I believe that. And then in 2020, COVID hit and we weren't going to the office anymore. And my business actually expanded. Not only did I close more real estate in 2020, I was recruiting and training more people than I was in um, prior years. And so when I was report or approached by somebody who'd gone through my real estate school, who'd gone to Keller Williams and then joined DXP, at that point, my argument that, gee, I need an office to go to every day, um, where that was run by somebody else, just sort of disappeared right? Because the opposite was happening. Um, my business was getting better. I was making more money. Things were actually working, working better. And then some of the reality hit me. And some of the reality is that um, what was I using the office for, right? Was I meeting buyers there? Well, usually if I met a buyer at the office, it was because it was more convenient for me not necessarily because it was convenient for the buyer. And even prior to COVID, I was meeting buyers at Starbucks and things like that. And I had found that it was a lot easier for me to say, hey, you know, rather than getting them to cross over, and I'm in Silicon Valley, which has, let's just say, a little bit of traffic, rather than trying to talk a buyer to driving across the, the area to come and meet me through the traffic, it was a whole lot easier to say, right, this is how I would say it. I would say, this may sound like a personal question, you know, but, but I'm, uh, what's your religion? Are you Starbucks? Are you Pete's? Are you Phil's? 
do you belong to some fringe group? You know, that sort of thing. And people would laugh and they would say, Starbucks, oh, well, fine. Why don't we meet at the Starbucks next to your office that you're used to going to? You pick, I'll meet you there. It was way easier than saying, well, you need to drive to my office. I also learned that agent, that loan agents that I work with were happy to, if it was a buyer, to meet them at their office because they wanted to meet them and that it really wasn't that I was using the office anyhow to meet with buyers. I really wasn't. And sellers, I don't recall ever meeting a seller at the office. I just don't recall that because you would always go and meet them at their house. So it made me think, well, why am I doing this, right? Why am I paying for this environment that I don't really use? And I was a recruiter for Keller Williams. I was on the leadership team at Keller Williams. My picture was on the wall where they had the leadership teams at different Keller Williams offices at different times. And I know that the way the offices were set up were not necessarily to impress clients. It was to recruit people to the office, right? Because they made it look nice. But of course, you have to realize somebody's paying for that. And the somebody was me and the other agents. So EXP is a cloud-based brokerage. Right? If you didn't know that, I'm just going to say it. Um, that doesn't mean some of us don't have offices. I'm actually renting an office in Morgan Hill where I live, um, not because I necessarily have to, but because of the nature of what I do, I, it's way more convenient. Um, I'm paying $400 a month. There's a conference room, there are modern, clean restrooms, there's a break room, um, it includes internet, and if I had the kind of phone you would plug into the wall, I guess I could do that, but you know, who does that anymore? Anyhow, so the cloud-based system is really what the big difference is, and by the way, a franchise is kind of an old school kind of a business model. I'm not sure that companies today starting businesses that wanted to expand that the franchise would really be, you know, the way to go. Um, we have a campus environment, right? That means there are no desk fees. And the reason there are no desk fees is there are no desks, right? You can use your own, um, you can work from anywhere, you can access our training and our support on your phone or from a laptop, a tablet, anywhere. That cuts the cost. When we talk about commissions and fees and all of the services and things, how can, how can EXP charge less money every month, pay a higher commission split, have a lower cap, I'll explain what that is, better technology, more training, more support, more options, how can they do all that um, and still make a profit? And the answer is they don't have thousands of brick and mortar buildings all over the country that they're paying rent on which means that all of the money that goes to support those facilities are now going to support agents and their services. Um, let me see if there's a question here. Even more broker access. That's correct. We're going to talk about that. There's even more broker access, right? And, uh, and, and thanks, Ken, for saying that, because uh, you may not be at Keller Williams, but all the offices have, all the brick and mortar traditional companies have somewhat of a similar structure. and Keller Williams might be a little more bloated in terms of their bureaucracy. So at a typical Keller Williams office, which they call market centers, there's a front desk person. That person is usually paid a salary and benefits. There's what's called a market center administrator. That person is paid a salary and benefits. There's a team leader who in the rest of the world would be called a sales manager, and that person is paid a salary with benefits. Then there's a broker. The broker is paid a salary. Then there's what's called an operating partner or operating principal, which is somebody that's part of the ownership team and they're paid a salary. Then there's the regional director who, as best I can tell, sells franchises, never really had much of an impact except, to, except negative ones in my environment. And that person is also being paid a salary and probably bonuses and benefits and things like that. Who's paying for all of that overhead? Um, well, the agents are. And out of that group that I just mentioned, the one person that's on that list that would be most valuable if you were an agent is the one that's called the broker. 
And as you're going to see what EXP has, they have the administration, but it's in the cloud and it's servicing larger numbers of people. It's a much greater efficiency. Um, they don't have the team leaders being paid a salary and the operating partners being paid a salary and no regional director being paid a salary. And so what they're able to do is to take all that money that they're not spending on that bureaucracy and have more brokers and people that are available to have you, help you with your transactions, more technology, more services, more support than what, what you get at a typical real estate office. And by the way, um, Keller Williams was probably better at it than many of the other companies that I've worked at where they didn't even have the, the people that would fulfill all those roles. You were sort of on your own. Um, let me see. What else? Cloud-based. So enterprise is a place where we can go. And I'm going to show you a little bit of what it looks like to go there. Transaction management. Uh, workplace is a community platform where you can share ideas find out what's happening look for referrals right that's not even on my list of ways of making money in real estate the customer relationship management system lead generation there's more than 50 hours of live training every week and a resource guide i'm going to give you a peek at what some of that looks like so i promise to talk about the three ways to generate income three different ways and the first way which is by the way for most real estate companies the only way that you're going to generate income, and that's selling real estate. Then there is also equity, which is stock. Now, those of you that are in the Silicon Valley area that are familiar with tech companies have probably heard of an RSU, which is a restricted stock unit, which is what people at Google and Apple and many of the big tech companies get. That's the kind of stock you get at EXP, it's a sort of a tech stock and revenue share, right? And I'm gonna let you see what's happened in my year at EXP for those different things. So how would you expand your real estate business by being at EXP? Well, first there's the commission split, the cap, lower fees, technology, certifications, training, and teams. That's sort of the list we're going to go through. So there is no death fee, right? There is no royalty fee. If you're at a Century 21, it could be as much as 8% off the top. If you're at Keller Williams, it's 6%. It caps at a certain level. Um, there is no franchise fees because it's not a franchise. It's a single brokerage. So the basic commission plan at EXP is 80-20 with a $16,000 cap. I'm going to show you what that would look like given different levels of volume. So once you've given twenty sixteen thousand dollars in income, so when you've sold a roughly three point two million dollars in real estate at a two and a half percent side, that would generate eighty thousand dollars in gross commission income. And if you're at EXP and EXP is getting twenty percent, that would be sixteen thousand dollars. What that means is that your next transaction, after you've done 80,000 in gross commission income, you're at 100% commission after that. There's a $250 per transaction fee, but once you've done 5,000 of those, it's now down to 75. The cost to join EXP is $149 one time startup fee. You get 1,000 business cards, you get 50 presentation folders. $85 a month, that goes for a technology suite that would cost you hundreds of dollars a month to buy, including in, in how to make flyers and all of the different marketing materials, including training and administration and all of that. When I recruit people, which I have from Intero and Compass and Keller Williams and Cobo Banker and those offices, a lot of times they, they say, okay, what are the other monthly fees? Let's say it's $85 a month. What are the, I mean, I, yeah, yeah. What are the other monthly fees? And the answer is there are no other monthly fees. That's it. And a guy that I had recruited from Intero, a Berkshire Hathaway group, if you're not familiar, was asking me, well, when I close a transaction, I bet there's fees. And I said, oh, yeah, yeah, there, there are fees. And he said, all right, here we go. You know, tell me what they are. 
and I said it's $25 for the file review and $40 for risk management, which is, you know, code for errors and emissions insurance. And then I said the risk management fee caps at $500. Now, I'm not going to ex repeat the word he yelled because um, it was, a, you know, an expletive. And he said, um, he said that he's charged $4,000 a year for errors and emissions insurance. So are there fees? Yeah, it's $65. And even the E&O fee caps at $500. Um, the fees are a lot less. Now, what would that look like? Let me jump around. Um, let's say, and I just did this for fun a little bit. And your commission split may vary, right? Some of you aren't getting two and a half percent. Some of you are getting more, right? Some of you are getting less. I'm just using this as a guide. Your mileage, you know, may vary. So looking at the dollar volume. Now, I'm in an area where the median priced home is 1.6 million. I, I closed a transaction this year that was almost 4 million. Getting to 5 million, by the way, is, you know, not that difficult, by the way. At many of the Keller Williams offices I work, they have a capping system too, but it would take about $5 million just to cap, right? Because their caps were between 30 and 45,000, depending on which one. So if you sold $5 million worth of real estate and you got a 2.5% side, that's $125,000 in gross commission income. Our cap is 16,000. So if you take the 125 and you subtract the 16,000, it's $109,000 net to you, which works out to be effectively 87.2% is what your split would be. And you can see as your volume goes up, by the way, my volume last year was about 12 million from personal transactions. As your volume goes up at 10 million, you can see that the average split, your effectively would be about 93, almost 94%. And by the time you get to 40 million, which I know may sound like a lot, but we're in a market where there are a lot of $2 million homes. But when you get to $40 million in volume, your net, that's a million dollars in gross commission. I guess what the point I'm making, it doesn't matter if you do $2 million or $5 million in gross commission income, it's still $16,000 is your cap. And everything you did above that, well, it's yours to keep. Right? Everything you did above that. Um, so I don't know, we pay better, right? That's one of the, one of the ideas. Uh, then what about technology, right? Now I was a tech coordinator for um, Keller Williams. Uh, I helped agents with their technology. I taught classes for Century 21. For those of you that aren't familiar, the company that owns Century 21 owns Coldwell Banker. They own ERA, they own Better Homes and Gardens, they own Sotheby's, they own Klein Realty and Zip Realty, and they own the Cochrane Group and a bunch of others. And they all use pretty much the same technology. And one of the issues that always was coming up is, is that first of all, most of the top agents in those companies were not using the company technology. Why not? And the answer was because the company owned the technology. And even though KW and I heard Compass promises their agents that if you leave, they will not peek at your database, right? We, you can trust us, right? You can trust us. If you leave, it doesn't matter how bitter it was, we promise we're not going to turn your database over to somebody else, right? Now, I, not entirely sure, you were, let's just face it, real estate agents, we're a bit paranoid. But you know, just because we're paranoid, that doesn't mean we don't have real enemies. So most of the top agents don't wanna use the company website, they don't wanna use the company customer relationship management system because what if they leave, right? The, the best case scenario, if you leave Keller Williams, Coldwell Banker, Intero and Compass, and you've been using their technology, the best case scenario is you're going to have to export everybody, import it into something else, and start all over again someplace else. And one of the things that I really liked about EXP, and I thought it was a smart idea, is 
First, they do not own what we, it's called KV Core. I'll show you what it looks like in a minute. EXP does not own KV Core. Other brokers use KV Core. You, as an independent agent, could take out your credit card and go sign up for KV Core. Now, what that means is, is that if you're at EXP and you're using KV Core and you decide for some reason you want to leave EXP, you're not going to lose your database or any of that stuff. You log in, you tell KV Core, hey, I want to pay for it myself. And they'll say, cool, you know, you got a credit card, wonderful. You can upload a new logo and away you go. EXP has no control over your system, your database, they have no way to peek at it, right? Now, I'm not saying Gary Keller, you know, in the evening is reading your emails, but, you know, agents, you know, might just sort of worry about that. The other thing that I noticed is that when I was at Keller Williams, they would roll out different tech platforms and things like that. There were lots of bugs and lots of problems and learning curves, and they were struggling to come up with the right trading and things like that. And we don't have to worry about that. The company that owns KB Core is called Inside Real Estate. They've been doing this for a while. They've got a YouTube channel. They have training. They have people that will help you. It's, 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 they're already taking care of all of that. So what does that, what does that look like, right? What does that look like? So I've logged in to my, my KV Core. I have, a, 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 let's say, a few thousand uh, contacts in it. And this is what it looks like. And this is sort of, we're talking about leads, right? And we're talking about increasing your real estate business. So KV Core does two things. Number one, it provides a platform for you to generate new leads. That's one thing. But number two, it provides a system for following up with the leads you already have. Experience has shown that about 70% of all real estate transactions come not from the initial contact with a potential client, but as a result of following up with that client. How good of a follow-up system do you have? So let me play books. I'm not, I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but what, I'm going to show you a couple of things about, let's just say, how to generate business. First of all, I'll start with contacts. This is called the Smart CRM, and I have different levels. I have, I have, I have, I have a few of them. Notice these little buttons here. I could send an email to everybody in my database. I can send a text message to everybody in my database. I can send a video message to everybody in my database. And then I have all, some other choices, right? Some other choices, but most of the good stuff is there. Um, let me pick on somebody that won't complain, just for, just for fun, all right? And uh, here, how about this guy here? So, one of the things that I can do with a particular contact is I could put in hashtags and a hashtag would be, is this a buyer? Is this a seller? Is this an investor? Is this a recruit? And that would allow me to identify them when I'm doing a marketing campaign. And it shows their status as it goes through. I can send them an email. A voicemail drop means I send them a voicemail message without their phone ringing. Um, there's a core present, there's core video, and more actions includes the ability to me to send a valuation for them. So for example, if I knew that this guy lived in Morgan Hill and he's interested in selling his house maybe in Morgan Hill, what I can do is I can set it up so that he gets a evaluation, evaluation of his property, an update on what's going on in Morgan Hill on a monthly basis without me having to actually do anything. Now he's going to get an email. It'll say, this is what's going on in your neighborhood. This is what's going on in your market. I don't have to do anything because if I have geographic, once I set this up, it'll just send it automatically. Just send it automatically. I think all that is, well, kind of cool. By the way, if I don't know, um, I can find, I can add a Facebook link. I could find them on Google, LinkedIn, Pipple, and Spokio are, you know, like stalking programs, which sometimes I've used if you really want to find 
somebody, but I can easily within the contact program connect to Facebook, Google, LinkedIn, um, connect to all that. But what about leads? Okay, so it's got a follow-up system. What about leads? What are the things that I can do if I go under listing? And there are different ways of generating leads. You can generate leads without spending any money, and you can generate leads by spending some money. Now, one of the things, if you're at an office and you're paying $200 and $300 a month for a brick and mortar building that you rarely go to, you know, or don't really need to go to, um, you could take that money, right, uh, cut it in half and spend some of that money on marketing. So my listings would be listed here. Company listings are all the listings in the MLS. Now, by the way, in this particular thing, if you're saying, well, you can't do that, I don't think that's legal, um, figure it out for yourself. Um, you could talk to me afterwards about how this all works. But let's say here's a, a house. Now, this is not necessarily my listing. This isn't necessarily an EXP listing. I didn't even really look at it. Um, when I go over here to actions, oops, they moved that around a little bit. Uh, when I go over here to actions, what I can do and it's been updated a little bit recently. Notice here's a link, right? And if I copy this link, what this link is going to provide is, whoops, a single property website for this listing, right? San Marcos Terrace, Sunnyvale, it's got a description. Notice whose contact information is there. Uh, if somebody says, I want to save it, I want to chat, I want to ask a question, I want to request a showing, I want, all of that comes to me, right? All of that comes to me. Now, if you're saying, well, gee, isn't this advertising somebody else's listing? Aren't I going to be arrested by the multiple listing service thrown in the association's holding cell or something like that? The answer is probably not, right? If you want to check with your own MLS, I have spoken to the director of compliance for the multiple listing service I'm a member of. And the question was, is the place where you're sending people to a what's called IDX compliance site? IDX stands for the Internet Data Exchange. And the answer is yes, this is an IDX compliance site, which means it's got the attribution to the listing agent and the things that are required for you to be able to use that data. Right, people could have found it on my website, right? And by the way, this MLS integration is an automatic thing. When I join EXP, I don't have to fill out forms. I don't have to do anything. So what I could do with this, for example, is I could share it on Facebook. Um, how much does KB Core cost with all the features you're showing? It's included in the $85 a month that you pay for EXP. There are no additional fees to access this program. It's included in the $85 a month. So let's say I wanted to do a um, listing of the day, listing of the week, and I wanted to post it on Facebook, right? Now this is probably not gonna let me log in because we'll just see what it lets me do. Let's just see what it lets me do. Now, I know it wants me to do, if I'm already logged into Facebook, it would let me do it, but I could share it on Pinterest, I could share it on Twitter, I could share it on Facebook, I could take the link and put it on LinkedIn, and let's say I wanted to do a listing of the, a listing of the week, a listing of the day, right, and I wanted to post it, reset it, yeah, I know, I'm not going to do this, I'm not going to go to Facebook right now, I'm not going to do that, right, I'm just going to leave this. Right. If you go to my website, by the way, michaeldevlin.com, you can share some of the, my listing of these listings on Facebook. If you find them, I can share them on Twitter. Right. I could, um, here, if I'm going to do this, you guys are pushing me. I can see, I can see. So if I log in first, yeah, I don't want you to, let's just see. See, once I've done this, I'm not going to go through the code thing. Right. Once I tried it, you know, it's done. So I can do that. Now, one of the things that I've done is I, when I coach people about this, is you're looking for something that sounds too good to be true, the most expensive home in a particular area, the least expensive home in a particular area. What does a median home look like? 
And one time I did a post where in my market, I, I picked a property in Mountain View, which is relatively expensive, and then a property in Boston Valley, I mean, and then a property in Hollister. And what I searched was were for homes that were the same age, same size, same bedroom, same bath. And when you looked at the outside pictures, they all kind of looked the same. And I just showed people what the difference was between Mountain View and Hollister. And by the way, for the same looking house, it was about $600,000, right? So you get the idea, I can play with this if I wanted to, right? I can find any, these are all the listings of the MLS. If I want company listings, just the EXP listings that are in the MLS, I could do that too, right? And again, I can find listings and I can put them, share them on social media and all that. I'm confused. Your email said the future of real estate and the three income streams. Yeah, I'm going to be talking about the three income streams. This is one of the income streams is how to make money using the technology, right? We're not going to be spending a lot more on this. But one of the other things I'm going to talk, I just wanted to mention is, is that you can create landing pages and squeeze pages, which are pages that produce results, they produce leads, as opposed to just a general web page. I'm sorry if my content isn't what you want. Um, what are the other things that, how do you make more money with real estate? Um, you can get certified. For commercial real estate, I don't know if you're ever interested in doing that. I've been approved by the broker in California to help agents with commercial real estate. There's a free commercial certification. We have a global marketing certification, um, Express Offers, which is an iBuyer program. You can be certified to do all that. You get a web page that you can share with people that are interested in the iBuyer program. And, and there's also a REO certification program and that does not require any additional fees. There's no additional fees. Um, what's another way to make, so one way that you're gonna, you can make money at EXP is by selling real estate. And your income may go up because your fees are gonna go down, your split is gonna go up, there's a cap, there's lots of certification. There's also a lot of training, there's over 50 hours a week. For example, this morning at 7 a.m., I'm sure most of my EXP people were on that. There was a class which is a higher level class. It's called an ICON class. And an ICON agent is somebody who does 24 or more transactions in one year. And that uh, was about affinity marketing, which is working with businesses in order to get real estate business. There's just a lot more of that. What's another way to make money in real estate. So first, sell real estate. The second that I mentioned was stocks. And right now, EXP is sort of doing, let me ask you this question. Which company do you think is worth more? Is it Hilton Hotels International or Airbnb? Now, oftentimes when I ask the question, people think, well, it must be Airbnb or you wouldn't be asking me the question. And the reality is it's Airbnb by a lot. Airbnb, last time I looked, was worth about 30 billion and, I mean, excuse me, 100 billion Airbnb and Hilton Hotels was worth about 30 billion, even though Airbnb doesn't have all those rooms. So one of the things that you get, and I'll, I'll just show you as we're going through this, um, that's not it. Uh, I've been logged out due to inactivity. Well, thank you very much. Let me go back. So after my first year here, I'll just start from the beginning. One year at EXP, log in, I go to stock. I'm sure all of you are getting stock, right? From your current companies, right? I'm sure you are. So one year at EXP, I ended up with $10,711 in stock. It's an RSU restricted stock unit, um, which means that it vests over time. As I do things, as I sponsor somebody, as I cap or they cap, as things happen, the company gives me stock. And if you become an ICON agent, an ICON agent is doing 24 or more transactions, they'll give you $16,000 worth of stock, which matches the amount of money that you would pay in company dollars. That's the cap. 
So they, they give you back your cap essentially in stock. And is EXP stock doing well? Um, if you read some of the different articles from the various investment companies about how well EXP stock is doing, let me just give you maybe an example. I don't want to do that. Remax. You've heard of Remax, of course. Who's the biggest real estate company of them all? Remax says they are. Keller Williams says they are. Who really knows? What is the market cap? of Remax right now, and this was done today. Today is uh, November 24th, 2021. So this has a tendency. So the value of Remax's stock is 556.718 million. Then there's a company called Rheology. And I mentioned that Rheology owns Cobalt Banker, and Cobalt Banker Commercial, and Century 21, and Sotheby's, and Better Homes and Gardens, and ERA and the Cochran Group, and Klein Realty, and Zip Realty, and title companies, Cornerstone Title among them, and Cardis Relocation Company, and how much is Rheology worth? They're worth a little under 2 billion, 1.86 billion. That is the value of their stock. Well, what about Compass? What about Compass? Aren't they killing it? Well, I don't know. Last quarter, last quarter they lost $100 million. And their market capitalization as of today is 3.8 billion. And how about EXP? EXP as of today's value is 6.7 billion. So we're worth more than Compass and the company that owns Coldwell Banker together. Right. So what, the way in which you can earn stock, I'm in a equity sharing program, which is coming up someplace, but in the equity sharing program, and what the equity sharing program is, is as, um, what the equity sharing program is, is that 5% of all of my personal transactions, all of my uh, commissions goes to buy EXP stock at a discount, and also, I'm given stock at EXP as I do certain things. So first, selling real estate. And we have a lot of tools that make that easier for you. It's cheaper for you to do it. The split is higher. The fees are lower. Second, you can get stock. Now, if we look at this is the third quarter report for EXP. Oops. The earnings report that's coming up later. Let me do that. Let me do that now. So the third way. The third way in which you can earn income with EXP is called revenue share. And what revenue share, and the, the way to think of revenue share is, let's say you introduced a buyer or a seller to an agent in another area. Let's say somebody that wants to buy or sell in Las Vegas and you introduce them to an agent or a broker in Las Vegas. Would you expect a referral fee when they close the transaction? And of course, everybody would say, yeah, of course. So if you introduce another real estate agent to EXP and they close a transaction, you're going to get paid, let's call it a referral fee. And we call it sponsoring, right? It's just the word we use. You don't necessarily have to answer their questions or train them or do anything like that. Now, the way that it works, um, let me just show you, right? So I, I talked about that, I did that. Which one of these is this? That's not, here we go. So this is what my revenue share looked like at the end of one year. Last month, I received $2,600.54 from EXP and revenue share. My total right now, it could go up a little bit because I have some closings as it goes up. Um, so right now I'm about $11,000 for this year in revenue share, which is money that EXP has given me. Now, just to be clear, let's say somebody's on an 80-20 split and they cap at $16,000. I'm not getting any of the commission from the agents that are in the revenue stream. I'm not getting any of their money. What I'm getting is some of that $16,000 they paid to EXP. Out of the $16,000 cap that goes to EXP, 50% of it is given back to agents. Half of the company dollars that go to EXP is given back 
to agents. Now, how can they afford to do this? They don't have thousands of brick and mortar stores. What is, and this by the way, is a residual income. Keller Williams had something like it. Um, I was at KW for seven years. One quarter at Keller Williams, I was in the top 20 recruiters for Keller Williams. And theirs was called profit share. And the last time I had access to all of the data, um, I was in the top one half of 1% of lifetime Keller Williams profit share earners. And it wasn't a lot, it wasn't a lot of money, right? It, it sounds really good as a percentage, but it really wasn't a lot of money. After three years, this is true for KW and DXP, you vest in the system, which means you continue to get profit share. Um, whether you're still at the company or not. Last month, my EXP revenue share, and this is in one year, was greater than my Keller Williams profit share, and that had been built for over 10 years. One of the differences is, is that Keller Williams based theirs on profits, and some offices that I had recruited people to that were actually selling real estate, I would get nothing because the office would say at least that it wasn't profitable. EXP isn't based on profit, it's based upon gross income. Now just think of it this way, if I did 11, I've done over 11, about $11,000 in profit share, uh, revenue share at EXP, my cap, I capped last year, this year uh, at EXP, my cap is $16,000. But I ended up the year with $11,000 in profit share and whatever the dollar amount was, $10,000 in stock. So I gave EXP 16,000, but have 22,000 in stock and revenue share at the end of the year. Now, not everybody is into revenue share and, oh, it sounds like multi-level marketing or something like that. And I'm not a recruiter. I'm just a real estate agent and all that. So fine, don't do it. Don't do it. But how can I can use, I'm gonna get rid of that. I can use this money for marketing, right? Um, I, I'm getting, I'm averaging about a thousand dollars a month just from EXP and revenue share. Now, how this works, it says here, it's like in a cascading, I'm gonna just go to this one. So if, I reintroduce somebody to EXP and they are a regular agent, they cap at $16,000. I'm going to make $2,800 every year that they're at EXP. And even after three years, I don't even have to be at EXP and I'm still going to get $2,800 every year that they cap. Now, when I was at KW, I had no idea if I recruited somebody and they capped, if I was gonna get any money at all or how much I would get because it was based on profits and I have no idea really, that, is that really the profit? I mean, you know, I have no idea how to check that, but because EXP is based on gross revenue, I know that if I introduce one person to EXP and they cap, I get $2,800. Um, let's say I average two people a year I'm obviously a little more committed than that, but let's say you were to average two people a year and you were to do it for five years, right? And so at that point, you had 10 people that were capping, you'd be getting $28,000 a year. Now, the way I see it is, is that because this is a residual income, which by the way, doesn't, as long as they're still there and every, I still get it. Um, I, I haven't worked at Keller Williams since 2017. I'm still getting profit share. So the value of this is like 10 times, and rather than if I just earned $11,000, that's $11,000, but $11,000 of recurring residual income is really worth more like 100,000 to me, at least when you look at the lifetime, not everybody stays forever. Now, one of the things, does it matter who your sponsor is? Well, it does because whether or not you're getting support sometimes depends on who your sponsor is and how much support you're getting me to spend depend on who your sponsor is. And I have agents that tell me that they either don't have a sponsor and they're not getting as much support as they wanted, right? They get a lot of support from EHP, but they don't have other agents 
that are really trying hard to help them as much. And or they they join when somebody else's group and they don't answer the phone and they don't return their calls and they're out of state and they don't help them. My goal is to help my people sponsor people. And to that end, I sponsor people under some of the people I sponsor. Now, if you say, well, why would you give away that? Look at what happens on level two. So if I sponsor a person and they cap, I get $2,800. If I help them sponsor a person and that person caps, the first line is going to get $2,800, but I'm going to get $3,200 a year. I actually get more if I put people on the second tier than I get on the first tier. So you have to have a certain number of agents that are selling real estate in order to do this, but it's not a very, it's not a very big number. So I'm very much invested in not only growing my own revenue share tree, but helping the people that I have in my group grow their revenue share tree. And one of the things you'll find is well, I joined EXP and in a couple of weeks, I got a call from a guy named Tom Davis. I recognized his name because I was at KW for a while and he was the number one Keller Williams agent in the United States seven times. He called me to welcome me to EXP, right? He called me and said, hey, you know, this is Tom Davis, you know, if you ever need any help, you know, welcome, I'd love, reach out to me. So I get help from my sponsor, he's my sponsor's sponsor. I get the help from his sponsor, who's a guy named Don Yoakum, who owned 10 Keller Williams franchises, including the big one in Sacramento, Roseville, Palo Alto, Cupertino, Santa Rosa, Petaluma, and others, and had the number one profitable office at Keller Williams, the number one agent, the number one team. So who you are working with can have an effect on how well some of this so um, I'm into doing that, right? And by the way, for most of us, if we're in sales, when we stop selling, we stop earning money. What I like about EXP is my stock won't, won't go away. Right? I'm still going to have, and we paid a cash dividend, wasn't huge, but it's better than losing 100 million in a quarter. We paid a cash dividend. My stock is still there. It's vesting. My revenue share is growing. Um, it's all pretty cool. So in terms of the stock, I'm in an equity program. So I get a certain amount of stock. Um, this is flipping back to where I was um, because I buy some, I get stock when I do certain things. Um, and uh, when you reach a certain level, you get more. Um, other little things, if you are paying for healthcare, you can save some money. At EXP, um, annual savings are oftentimes as much as $8,000 between people that are comparing the different programs. For an international company, um, added Portugal and Germany recently, and there's more countries being added. And so normally, like when I was at Century 21, which was international, or Keller Williams, that was international, and they said, oh, well, we opened up an office in Portugal. You know, I would say, oh, well, that's, you know, that's nice, you know, that's nice. But how is that going to affect me in Silicon Valley? You know, how, do, how does that, that doesn't affect me at all. However, because I own stock in EXP World Holdings, uh, which is all of those different, you know, countries, if EXP does better, my stock does better. It actually, you know, kind of affects me. We're the fifth largest real estate company in the United States by transaction size. Um, our revenue in the last quarter went up 97%, which is good for the stock. Profits went up 70% year over year. Net income went up 60%. We paid a cash dividend. Our number of agents in the last quarter went up 82%. Over the year before, I think we added 800 something agents last week. Sides are up 72%. Volume is up 98%. Uh, and that quarter, we, we expanded into Panama and Germany. And we have a net promoter score of 71, which is a measure of agent satisfaction because, you know, I, I'm satisfied. Um, we're listed as one of the fast 500 technology companies by Deloitte. We were named um, Innovator Brokerage of the Year 
in 2021 by Inman, that's Glenn Sanford, say hello, um, the founder of EXP. And we're currently at about 65,000 agents. By the end of the third quarter, you can see, you know, our, you know, we're, we're, we're growing, we're growing. Um, so the three income streams, because that's what I talked about, this, where is the future of real estate? And by the way, one of the articles that I had highlighted uh, here, Motley Fool, who is the Amazon of real estate? It's an interesting question. And the person analyzed EXP, Zillow, and Redfin. And what he pointed out, this was something of a, you know, um, being able to see the future. I was thinking of a fancy word to say that, but I lost it there. And one of the things that this guy who's writing about stock said that Zillow's um, asset included a lot of houses they had bought, which he wasn't really sure was a valuable thing because they may not be worth as much as they paid for them. Oh, really? And that when you take out the eye-buying properties of Zillow, that EXP, the, the conclusion of the article is EXP is the Amazon of real estate. Like as it says at the top, it's not Zillow, that we're growing faster than Zillow, we're growing way faster than Redfin, we're growing faster than uh, Open Door, the, the future of real estate. So where is the future, right? Is the future in brick and mortar buildings? You know, like Compass has done very well because, well, they, have been good at recruiting people. They, they've got uh, an environment that many agents like. Um, but the, when you read people talking about their stock, what they're talking about, it's a traditional real estate brokerage brick and mortar. And is our future in more brick and mortar buildings, uh, more blockbuster video locations, or is it going to be in you know cloud-based? Um, what are your thoughts about Open Door? Open Door is a iBuyer program, which did better than did did better than Zillow. And by the way, EXP has an iBuyer program, but we don't own the iBuyer program. EXP isn't buying the houses, right? Which we have investors that buy the houses, which means that they're actually probably better at it than the, the obviously Zillow's algorithm was. Open Door is one of the big ones. But, you know, I'm not sure how much money they've made. So far, the iBuyer program hasn't produced a lot of money, but it produces leads. In other words, when they, I think it was Phoenix or one of the areas where they had all really, you know, uh, jumped on it to try and do the iBuyer program, what they found is, is that over 90% of the people, I think it was like 94% of the people that were responding to an iBuyer um, ad or something as a seller, in fact, hired a traditional agent. Now, if you're thinking, well, that doesn't sound bad to me, um, our hired buyer program, and by the way, I'm obviously, as I showed, certified in the I buyer program. Do I have this open someplace? Someplace? Maybe I do. I don't know. But um, I have one of the things that I get in the I buyer program is I have a website which is branded to me. And when somebody goes to that website and they fill it out asking for information about selling their house for cash, um, the lead actually comes to me. It's a way, it's something else that I can market to increase my real estate business. Would you be interested in getting REO business, real estate owned by the bank, foreclosures, that sort of thing? We have an REO certification program and we're part of all of that, that network. Um, I buyers, if you're interested in getting into that as an agent, we have an I buyer program as well. All right, um, was that enough? I think I went through the three, the three streams of income, and the future of real estate, as I was billed to do. Any other questions about this? Is I reaching the? Oh, one other thing. Let me say one other thing. Teams. Another way in which you can make money selling real estate at EXP is to have a team. I have a team. My team, I have agents from as far south as San Diego, Los Angeles. I have agents in Sacramento, Oakland, Contra Costa County, all over Silicon Valley. My team, this isn't my 
personal transactions. But so far in 2021, my team has closed 61 escrows, 61 escrows. Now, when I was at Keller Williams, they were doing what was called an expansion team, but you, anybody that had joined at KW had to be at a market center, which is what they called an office, and every market center had its own cap. So I would have to, if I had, 10 locations where I had people on my team, I would have 10 caps, right? One for every market center, I'd have 10 caps. And considering that a lot of their caps were 30 to or more thousand, you understand operating in 10 locations could cost me $300,000 in cap. Because we don't do it that way at eXp, I have one cap, $16,000. That's one cap. And in addition to my own personal transactions, um, I, my team has done over 60 escrows. And I, my next phase is to move to getting agents in other states. What other states might that be? How about the ones that people from California tend to move to, where I, where I get leads from them and I can give them leads. And there are some agents that even have international teams. So a regional team would be, you could have people all around the Bay Area on your team, still one cap, right? Because we don't have all the brick and mortar buildings, so it's still one cap for you. But you could have people all around the Bay Area, that would be a regional team. You could have people all over California, which is what I have. You could have people all around the United States, right? And one of the, one of since we're expanding internationally, one of the, certification programs involves international expansion. Money moves back and forth. Did I mention we we're in India as one of those countries? And I've got agents that are from India that own real estate in India and they know real estate agents in India. You see where I'm going. There's more opportunities for earning money in the real estate business um, through leveraging and, and creating a team and and that sort of thing. Didn't want to forgive the team thing. Any any other questions? Don't everybody blurt it out at once. Not really. Maybe that's maybe I've, I've given you lasting satisfaction because you're you're done listening to me. If you're interested in finding out more about EXP. I've got my contact information in there. Reach out to me. Um, and uh, thank you, Jane. Everybody have a great Thanksgiving. Um, next year will be a great year. If you would like to reach, talk to me about how to increase your business, just uh, reach out. I'd love to talk to you. Thanks a lot, everybody. Stay safe out there. Have a great holiday. Bye.